A gas is a large number of atoms or molecules that occupy the same region and are not bonded to each other. The particles in a gas usually don't interact very strongly with each other until they exchange momentum in a glancing collision. They also bounce off the walls of their container, but otherwise they travel in a straight line. Since each particle in the gas has its own position and velocity, it is not reasonable to keep track of each particle individually. Instead, when we study gases, we look at three overall properties that describe the gas as a whole. First is the volume of the gas. If the gas is contained in a box like we'll be studying today, this volume is just the volume of the box since the particles in a gas will always spread out around the box. We can change the volume of this box by using a piston or the volume can change naturally if the walls of the box expand or contract under changing temperature. Second is the pressure of the gas. The best way to think of pressure in this model is the collisions between the particles and the walls of the box. The stronger these collisions are and the more frequently they occur, the greater pressure the gas will have. And lastly is the temperature of the gas. Temperature is basically the same thing as the average kinetic energy of all the particles in the gas. The faster the particles are moving or the more mass they each have, the higher the temperature of the gas. These three overall properties are related by the ideal gas law. Pressure and volume go on one side of the equation and temperature goes on the other side. There are some other numbers in this equation, but they're usually kept constant while we focus on volume, pressure, and temperature. The ideal gas law says that if you increase the volume, meaning you allow the gas to expand, while the temperature stays consistent, the pressure must decrease. This makes sense because the particles won't be striking the walls of the box as frequently. The ideal gas law also says that if you increase the temperature, meaning you make the particles move faster while the volume stays consistent, the pressure must increase. This makes sense because the particles will be striking the walls of the box with a higher speed. In this code, we'll use a lot of what we've learned in previous episodes to animate the particles that make up a gas. Here we create each particle and use a random number generator to give each particle a different position and a different velocity. To learn more about random numbers, see the video linked in the description below. Notice that for the first time in this series, we're using all three dimensions, X, Y, and Z. In the animation loop, we move each particle forward using distance equals velocity times time. Then we need to check for whether each particle has collided with the walls of the box. If there was a collision, then we need to turn this particle around and record this collision in our calculation of the pressure. Then we need to check for whether any two particles have collided. If so, we use the glancing collision code from episode 30 to make the particles bounce off of each other. Notice that we don't record this collision in our calculation of the pressure since it's internal to the gas. When we run the code, we see that our particles start moving in their random directions. When they collide with the edges of the box, they turn around, and when they collide with each other, they exchange momentum. Let's take a look at what happens when we increase the box's size. You can see in the animation that there is a longer period of time between collisions with the walls, which should make the pressure decrease. Sure enough, our graph of pressure versus volume shows a general decrease following the general rule of the ideal gas law. Lastly, let's take a look at what happens when we increase the gas's temperature. Notice how the atoms move faster as the animation proceeds since we're pumping the gas with heat. This makes the atoms strike the walls more frequently and with a higher speed so that the pressure increases as the temperature rises. You have now learned how to model an ideal gas using many particles. Follow the link in the description below to find a set of activities to help you learn more about ideal gases.